hello everybody hello everybody welcome to my youtube channel my name is stephanie agbonkwari and i'm popularly known as dr ozion welcome to healthy lifestyle matters of course healthy lifestyle does matters okay guys so on today's video i'm gonna be talking about some healthy lifestyle we should practice on our daily base on the day-to-day -day activities we should practice this healthy lifestyle is gonna save us a lot of money in the future for hospital bills okay guys because some people stay here more than a year without going to the hospital because you're learning to practice a healthy lifestyle a healthy lifestyle is gonna take you a long way more than you can think of first question that i want to ask you how do you thaw your food frozen food food coming out of the refrigerator let's say a meat how do you thaw it are you sure you are thawing your food the right way that is healthy for your body how often do you should you change your bed sheet how often should you change your toothbrush guys that is what some of the healthy lifestyle i want us to practice this is just part one as time goes on i'm gonna be uploading more videos on things we should practice the right way when it comes to lifestyle healthy lifestyle okay without wasting much of our time okay guys these are some of the changes that will save your life like save you from being sick save you from hospital bills and stuff like that some healthy lifestyle to practice okay guys so the first question is how often should you change your toothbrush Do -do -do. Anybody have an answer? Leave it in the comment section below what you think or what, what you've been practicing, okay? So, change your toothbrush every three months, guys. Guys, let us learn to change our toothbrush every three months. At least, if you cannot change it every month, please, every three months, change your toothbrush. Why? Because when your toothbrush is too old, it does not longer serve the purpose of taking off debris or cleaning your teeth properly. And you know, if you don't clean your teeth properly, especially the tongue, if you don't brush it well, if the toothbrush is too old, that it cannot perform the functions of taking off debris. Of course, you know, you won't brush your tongue very well. And before you know, you start developing bad breath. And when you start developing bad breath, it leads you to heart disease and you know stuff like that you don't want to go there and another consequences is that the bristle that can become fray less effective clock remove you know hence we causes bad breath and i already mentioned that right so please change your toothbrush at least every three months if you cannot change it every month some people say they don't have money but please learn to that for you to spend 200 a 200 francs here for in Cameroon money or how many cents in uh, dollars please get you a new toothbrush at least every three months if you cannot change it every month at least every three months I've seen people who use toothbrush for years and i'm like like seriously what is there again okay number two changes that i want you to practice for a healthy lifestyle is that kitchen sponge there we go there we go kitchen sponge how often should you change your kitchen sponge? The one you use in the kitchen to wash dishes or to, you know, you know what I'm saying. How often should you change your kitchen sponge? Kitchen sponge should be changed every two weeks. Why? Because it harbors microbes, bacteria, and if not changed frequently, can be a risk factor of intestinal infections, guys. Especially... I'm going to use this local word, iron kucha, in Africa, that's how we call it. Especially that one, it can get roasted. You all know what I'm talking about. Please, kitchen sponge should be changed every two weeks. I mean what I said, every two weeks, because it harbors microbes, bacteria. You know, when you wash dishes and you, well, we squeeze it, but it's not dry enough. It's not completely dry. It is halfway dry, and that wetness is a breeding ground, or it's a, it's a good habitation for bacteria to grow on. And before you know, the next time you just take it and you scrub the plate, and we don't even sometimes we don't even rinse the plate properly, and that way we are still consuming bacteria. We are trying to 
get rid of bacteria and stuff like that. So please, we cannot get rid, but we can limit. We all know bacteria are everywhere. Bacteria are micro. That is why even in um, even in disinfectant spray, they will tell you ninety nine and. Uh, uh, 99.9 or 99 point so there is never an infectant spray that is 100 percent effective because bacteria are everywhere and we are just trying to reduce the number of bacteria but we cannot totally eradicate it because it is everywhere okay so with that being said kitchen sponge i will tell this again please change it every two weeks why because it harbors microbes Bacteria and if not changed frequently can be a risk factor of intestinal infection Did you did that sound right in your ear? No, I don't think so Intestinal infection, you know what that means So intestine. So please the consequences of not changing your toothbrush I'm just giving you guys, you know healthy lifestyle to practice and what will happen if you don't practice this lifestyle The consequences is that it collects a scary amount of bacteria and germs then contaminate the surface area because when we um when we uh, use the sponge when we use the when we use the sponge and we we squeeze it we don't take out all the water in it we just take out part of the water that is why it is still moist and wet and then when we keep it that is a good breathing space for some bacteria that they can grow on and then when we put it there, the bacteria does not only go to in the sponge or on the sponge, it goes in the surfaces around the sponge. Thereby, we are spreading bacteria on common or surfaces. And we don't want to do that. We don't want to spread bacteria. Okay. Number three, healthy lifestyle routine that I want you to practice is your bed sheet. How often do you or should you change your bed sheet? guys leave it in the comment section below let me see what you're doing girls okay so bed sheet and pillowcases should be changed every four to seven days i mean this depends on how long you spend in bed you know bed sheet should be changed every four to seven days but like i said it depends on how often you spend on bed or how long you spend on bed okay because there are some people especially for travel nurses there are some people who their job is a uh, kind of mobile, they move from one place to another and they don't get time to spend a lot of time in their house or in their apartment or whatever be the case. I mean, they don't get a lot of time to spend in the bed. So they can go a whole week without sleeping on their bed. They are traveling. Water. So that case is different. Okay. But if you know you're spending at least eight hours on your bed a day, Please change your bed sheet and pillowcases, especially because some, I'm emphasizing on pillowcases, especially because some people get to some people get to send out saliva in their from their mouth while sleeping. I mean, and then the saliva is all over the pillowcases. That is a more reason why, and it contains bacteria too. We all know that, right? That is a more reason why you should change your bed sheet and your pillowcases at least every four to seven days, with an exception of if you are not spending or sleeping most of, most the night in your bedroom. So please change that, okay? All right. So consequences of not you know that when we spend the night in the in the bed. Our body sends out oh, it exhale oh, bacteria. It sends out glands that are not needed in the body. So please, let's practice this. Consequences of not washing your bed sheet when you you constantly use them every four to seven days is that expose you to fungi, bacteria, pollen and animal disorder, and pollen and animal dandruff. We have body secretion, sweat and skin cells. When we, like I said, when we when we sleep at night, our body secrete enzymes and stuff like that. We secrete enzymes, you know, and stuff like that. We there's bacteria, so that is the more reason why you should change your bed sheet and pillowcases. If you use your bed at least eight hours a day, you should change it four to seven. Between four to seven days, you should change your bed sheet. Okay. Another thing that we want to talk about that you should change. Okay, change if you're practicing this lesson, change to a healthy lifestyle. Okay, it's your body towel. How often should you change your body towel? Oh, okay. Well, 
this is really weird because especially for those using color towels because they don't see the dirt in it doesn't mean it shouldn't be washed excuse me sir i'll repeat myself again because you are using a color towel it can be red it can be pink it can be whatever color brown especially because you are using a color towel and use things physically you cannot see the depth in the towel it does not mean you don't have to wash the towel some people will be like oh but i wash my body and the towel is, is just there to dry the body uh so my, i wash my body my body is already clean and the towel is just there to dry the body so how possible is the towel getting dirty yes ma'am yes sir the towel is getting dirty you know why because not all part of your body you wash them you don't wash all part of your body you wash the ones that you can face you can you can access you know what i'm saying some people except for the for people who have the sponge that they can scrub their back but even without that there is this long sponge i have it in my bathroom that i use to scrub my back because my hand cannot get to you know the, the inner part of my back like my back my hand cannot get in there so i use that sponge to try to wash the back but still yet i'm not getting all single part of the back so because you cannot access to wash every single part of your body properly the way it should be washed now when you wash your body you claim or you assume your body is clean which is we all know when we wash the body is clean but bear in mind that we don't wash all parts of the body especially your back we don't wash all part of the body thoroughly the way it should be washed. hence when we use the towel because people a lot of people cross back the towel and then the you know they make it wipe themselves from behind by so doing the part that you didn't wash or, or scrub properly the towel now you scrub it and try it now as uh, carrying the bacteria that you didn't wash off from your back especially so the fact that you wash your body is clean we all know your body when you wash your body is clean but that does not mean your body has no bacteria in it. The towel also have to, uh, to take off some of the bacteria that you could not when you were taking a shower, okay? So that's what I want you to, to know. Let's talk about a uh, body towel. How often should you change your body towel? Body towel should be changed twice every week. Let it dry. A lot of people, this is why people are so, so infected nowadays because people don't let, especially people abroad, they don't let their towels dry. I'm specifically to people abroad because most people abroad, I'm not saying all. Most people, especially abroad, they don't allow their towel to get dry. This is what I'm saying. When they oh, come out of the shower, they use a the towel, they just hang it maybe by the shower or by something that they use to dry the towel. And it's not getting and it's not getting dry in its completion. And they see water in it it's a little bit moist or wet so that wetness can still be a, 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 a good environmental condition for bacteria to grow on that is why I repeat that it is mostly practice to for people abroad because people especially back from Africa they have a sun they have ropes that they've tied from one pole to another and they, they, they hang their towel there for it to get dry and it's been hit by sun directly and so they, they tend to dry quickly and completely. So that's why I emphasize that most people, I know some people in America, they still do that, but most people or abroad, they still do that, but most people don't do that. So let's practice to dry our towel after each use, completely dry. Okay, guys, let's, let's do that, okay? Body towel, twice should be washed, twice every week, okay? Let it dry. Your skin has bacteria which normally stays there and your towel cleanses them i already mentioned that therefore using one towel for too long can cause more harm than good okay also you should not use the same towel for your face and the rest of your body because you might have a sensitive skin and you might transfer bacteria from one part of your body to another same like for females you females well not only female the same like male or female or whatever be the case 
same like you don't have just one washcloth there is a washcloth just for your face there is a washcloth for your private area there is a washcloth for your body okay you should have at least three washcloths for a good shower one for your face because most of the times the face is very very sensitive okay one towel should be specifically for your face like you wash your face and it should be a towel it really baffles me when people i mean some people manage to do it but people have just one washcloth they use it for their face they use it for their private they use it for their whole body that is contamination cross contamination you don't want to do that okay so let's practice to do things the right way at least every female especially females for men they really don't have a lot of issue but women is the, the, the consequences are just too much women especially i'm not saying men should not should you use one or uh, one uh, washcloth no I'm saying that use at least three washcloths, one for your face, one for your private area, and one for your entire body. Women must, must have at least three washcloths, okay, for, to make sure that one is for your face, the other one is for your preview region, and then the, the last one is for your entire body, okay. Let's, let's try to practice things the right way so that way we spend less money in the hospital i did mention that do not share your towel i don't care if it is your husband i don't care if it is your wife if it's your boyfriend it's if it's your whatever be the case do not share a towel with anybody i repeat don't share your towel with anybody you don't it is a bad practice it is a very very bad practice you know why first of all it's cross contamination because you guys don't have the same medical condition you guys don't have the same skin tone you guys don't have nothing when you use your spouse towel you are cross contaminating yourself because your your spouse or your girlfriend might be contaminated or have an infection or have some kind of sickness or disease and by so doing using their towel you can you, of course equally get contaminated by that so you don't want to do that there should be no showing of towers there should be completely no for no reason i said so for no reason okay let's go now to another okay how do you thaw your food when you remove it from the freezer how do you thaw your food when you remove it from the freezer are you that type that remove let's say a meat this is uh US, this is i mean these are frozen foods all right whether it is beef chicken or fish how do you thaw it like defrost it when you took it when you take it out of the refrigerator how do you defrost it are you that type that when you remove it from the freezer you put it in the sink and let it thaw on its own are you that type that when you remove it you put hot water in a bowl and put the meat in there. Are you which which time you which time you practice? What practices you use to thaw your food? All right. So without much ado, let me tell you some of the three right and safe way to thaw your food with the minimal contamination of bacteria. Okay, these are the three main ways you can safely thaw your food you know i'm gonna list them okay so let me tell you something do not put do not put it in warm water counter because when frozen when frozen the food gets to be over 40 degree fahrenheit okay bacteria that were present before frozen can multiply hence food poisoning okay when you put your food in a when you put your when you take out food from the uh, from the freezer sometimes it is 40 degrees fahrenheit and stuff like that and when you put it in the sink or in hot water it can give a breathing space for more bacteria to multiply okay can be a good breathing place for more bacteria to multiply so please don't take off don't take your food from the refrigerator and put it directly to the sink especially when there's no bowl on it that's a practice you don't want to do okay the right way to thaw your food properly and safely is that um move from the freezer to refrigerator 
one advice i'll advise everybody when it comes to food throwing is that plan ahead of time if you know you want to cook beef chicken fish meat or whatever be the case pork well we in them the rest if you know you have in your menu tomorrow you want to cook pork or whatever be the case and it is in the freezer please plan ahead remove it the right and the safe way for you to do so is to remove it from the freezer and put it inside the fridge we all know the difference between the freezer and the fridge all right so move from freezer to refrigerator that's the right way to thaw your food and let it thaw gradually on its own okay you know put it in a bowl before you put it in the in the fridge because you know the temperature in the freezer is not the same temperature we have in the fridge so put it in a bowl so that while the 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 meat or fish is thawing from the freezer the water will stay in the bowl and does not have to make your fish nasty all right the second method is cold water in a pot put the meat change water every 30 minutes okay cold water in a pot okay yeah Put cold water in a pot or bowl or whatever be the case, and then you put the meat inside and let it thaw. Yes, that's what I'm saying, okay? Put cold water in a pot or in a bowl, in a pot, put it uh, oh, in in a pot, put the meat in there, and you can either boil it or cook it like that. But if you feel like, oh, you need to wash the meat before you do that, when you boil it, then you can wash it, okay? And then the third right way, to properly thaw your food safely, meat or fish or whatever be the case, is to put it in the microwave to cook, okay? The right and safe way to thaw your food, you can either put it in the microwave for it to cook, or you can either cook it like that, or you can move it from the freezer and put it inside the fridge in a bowl. Those are the three safe and right way for you to thaw food properly and not putting the food or the meat in the sink. Okay, so don't do that, y'all. So another health, another lifestyle I want you to practice is that socks. How often should you change your socks, the one you wear, and before you put on your shoes? Socks, S O C K S. How often should you change your socks? Socks should be changed every day. Socks should be dry. Remember when you put on socks and then you put on your shoes. That heat make your, your feet sweat, uh, send out sweat, okay, release the sweat. Make sure your socks are dry, please. Because if your socks are not dry, when you wear the socks and you put on your shoes, it can cause you to have what we call in an African local well, water rain. Let me put it that simple so that everybody will know what I'm, what I'm, I'm saying, okay. So, all right, athlete, Athlet uh, feet, foot, watering. Okay, so socks should be changed every day, and they should, you should make sure that your socks are dry. All right, because why you wanna? Okay, socks should be changed every day. Should be dry socks. All right, why should you change your socks every day? Because you sweat in your in your socks and provide a good environment for fungi growth. And, and can lead you to athlete food, what I, when I just mentioned, all right? The another thing that I want you to practice is tomatoes, good or spoiled slash good tomatoes. You all, <laughs> that mommy give me rotten tomato can kill you, you all. Let's stop exaggerating because something is cheap. There is a reason why that thing is cheap because it will kill you. <laughs> there is a reason why that thing is cheap because it will kill you. I've seen people who go to the market and because they know that the, the tomato that is spoiled is cheap, they buy the tomatoes thinking that when they come home, they will just uh, uh, blend the tomatoes and boil it and everything will be okay. Excuse me, ma'am, everything will not be okay. That tomato is spoiled, it is spoiled, okay? Let me show you guys a demo. Oh, I just have this just for the purpose of in this video so this is a spoiled tomatoes i want to bring it closer so everybody can see this is what i call tomatoes that is spoiled you see the place a black something right there can you all see it that is a tomato that is spoiled that you should not no matter how cheap it is you should not consume these tomatoes i'm going to explain why and then this is the tomatoes that you should consume i'm going to turn it around so you guys can see how healthy it is 
yeah you see there is no black spot in it so this one is good to go it is still strong you can see it is still strong this is the one you shouldn't consume this one with this so tomatoes 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 which one do you consume just be honest leave it in the comment section below let me see what you consume all right guys not consume consume not consume consume these are the differences okay just for the purpose of demo okay that's it it's done okay let's talk about tomatoes okay okay when it comes to tomatoes first of all before i go to the bad this point and the good tomatoes um how do you wash your tomatoes you know i know this sounds this might sound strange to some people but um there is um a spray that is selling walmart that it is a spray i mean some people use soap i when i don't have that spray at home or i'm out of it i use soap not the like the liquid soap I use a little bit of it when I'm out of my tomato wash spray. Um, I use a little bit of that soap, a little bit, just to wash the tomatoes. I wash tomatoes with soap. Now you know. Not a whole bunch of soap. Liquid soap. There's a specific liquid soap to wash tomatoes. There's a specific liquid soap to wash tomatoes. You can get it from Walmart, Kroger, or Fiesta. It is written there. Tomato wash. So just so you know, so when I'm out of the, uh, of the my tomato wash spray, I use soap, a little bit of soap to wash my tomatoes. At least I know I'm not gonna get off all the bacteria, but let me get most of the bacteria that comes with tomatoes because you don't know where they produce it. You don't know the hands that have touched it in Walmart, in whatever store you got it from. You don't know how many hands because moreover, tomatoes in in Walmart body are just spread in a in a in a tray where everybody gets to pick what they want. And some people don't even use a nylon or a plastic to wrap their hands inside or a gloves before picking their tomatoes. They just use their hands. And now with the, with COVID and every other thing that is going on, you want to be extra careful. That is why I definitely wash my tomatoes, not just with plain water, but with soap, a little bit of soap, liquid soap, okay? I'm not saying go get a whole soap and pour it there. You're gonna wash it <laughs> for the whole time for it to get the soap off it completely so you use a little amount of soap you can put it in the water and then a little amount of liquid soap drop it in the water and then make sure it is uh you know the the the, the soap has developed form or the soap is a little bit foamy and then put the tomatoes in there and then you wash it and then make sure you rinse pour like wash off the soap properly even though you're gonna get it from the test of your food when you're done cooking okay so now let's go now back to business okay tomatoes spoiled or good tomatoes I already demoed the good and the bad tomatoes lime vinegar people use lime people use vinegar people use wash with soap people use lemon to wash their tomatoes but I use soap or I use my tomato wash spray it is a soap specifically a spray for to wash tomatoes i use that too you can either some people use lime some people use vinegar some people use wash or, or soap like what i use there is remember there is a wash soap for fruit there is a wash soap for uh, tomatoes vegetables yes they are in stores if you haven't seen it keep on checking and ask when you go next to the store they are selling all those things okay so tomatoes spoiled good lime people use lime wash with soap lemon to clean the tomatoes okay some spoiled tomatoes are contaminated with afflex afflex toxins afflex toxins from a fungi infection which even boiling it will not kill them they can cause digestive problems and liver cancer okay guys also contaminated tomatoes leave cont contaminated tomatoes have been linked to incident of food poisoning caused by salmonella you know we all know someone salmonella right salmonella is a it's a bacteria infection okay so some spoiled tomatoes are contaminated with aflatoxins from a fungal infection which even boiling it will not kill them even if you take this uh, uh spoiled tomatoes and you boil it the some of the bacteria that these tomatoes have or these tomatoes uh, or have like i said will not kill that bacteria even if you boil it some of those bacteria will not will not spoil will not be eliminated so the best thing is just for you to avoid tomatoes that are spoiled i understand it's cheap but think about the consequences okay 
Okay. All right. So some spoiled tomatoes are contaminated with aflatoxins toxins from a fungal infection, which even boiling it will not kill them. They can cause these are these are the consequences of eating cheap tomatoes just because it is cheap. Let me read out the consequences so you know. Okay. They can cause digestive problems and liver cancer. Oh no. I don't think you want to go this far. Also, contaminated tomatoes have been linked to incidents of food poisoning caused by Salmonella. Okay, guys. And I want you to know, some bacteria have endospores, endospores that protect them from heat, e.g. air coli. E.g. air coli, which double in 20 minutes. We all know air coli is about it's a it's a bacteria infection. It's a bacteria that will multiply every 20 minutes and double its size. That doubles and multiplies every 20 minutes. Some bacteria, for example, E. coli, has endopores in them that protect them from heat. That is to tell you that these spoiled tomatoes, that instead of you to let it go, you decide some of them, they even give, you, give it for you for free because it's spoiled. They don't need it. Instead of you to let this spoiled tomato go, you keep it and you think, by boiling it, you are you have killed the bacteria and the germs. No, ma'am, you haven't. Some bacteria, example, air coli, has endospores in, in them that protect them from heat. While you are boiling it, thinking you are you are killing the bacteria, the heat is protecting the bacteria. Just to, <laughs> what a war! <laughs> Just to let you know, okay. Okay, we are still talking on tomatoes because that is our main concern, okay? When tomatoes are rotten, they normally have microorganisms. To an extent, well, this one is not really too bad. I kept it purposely for the demo. To an extent, uh, when tomatoes are rotten, to an extent, you start seeing, even with your naked eyes, without the use of microscope, you start seeing organisms and bacteria in there. Like, you start seeing organisms like little... What is it insect? No, it's not insect. I don't know what to call it, but you start seeing microorganisms walking across them. You can you can see it with your physical eye without the use of a uh, microscope. So we are still on that. Alrighty. So when tomatoes are rotten, they normally have microorganisms. You might see them, you might not see them, but they are there. That is why they are micro. We cannot see them with an naked eye, but to some extent, I've seen tomatoes that are rotten and there are microorganisms there with my naked eye, little insect like that. So, so when tomatoes are rotten, they normally have microorganisms, mostly fungi, which produces mycotoxins, which are deadly and induce cancer. No, we are not going that far. We're going to avoid that tomatoes, okay? All right, so advice. It is better to have a small quality of healthy stew than a larger pot of unhealthy stew which could kill the entire family. It is preferable to have a small pot of stew because most people use uh, tomatoes for stew. That's what we use. So it is advisable to cook a small healthy pot of stew with good tomatoes like this than to cook a big pot of unhealthy stew with rotten and spoiled tomatoes like this because it can kill the entire family. We talked about uh, a digestive problem as one of the consequences of eating such tomatoes. Let me wipe my hands. <laughs> we talked about um, digestive problems. We talked about induced cancer. We talked about, God, we don't want to go that far, okay? There are sprays, wash, uh, that you can get them from the store if you um to wash your tomatoes so guys let us learn to practice healthy lifestyle as the channel says healthy lifestyle matters of course healthy lifestyle does matter okay guys so i know from today after watching this video we're gonna get rid of these tomatoes just like what i'm gonna do now because the demo is over and we're gonna consume these tomatoes that is strong looking good and healthy I hope and I wish that we practice what we just said or we just listened to and learn to practice a healthy lifestyle. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Please, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube plan channel, please, I beg you and I urge you, please, to subscribe for more videos. This is just a part one of a healthy lifestyle, practices of a healthy lifestyle on our daily base routine. And if you have any concern, leave it in the comment section below. Don't forget, like the video, share the video, 
to friends and family your subscription and notification bell to be notified when i upload a new video is needed thank you for watching i'll see you guys in the next video